Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, purchased by God. Spirit washed in his blood. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Said, this is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praise my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. in my Savior all the way long. Come on, say this is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praise in my Savior. Oh, what a blessed assurance. Oh, what a blessed assurance. Oh, what a blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a blessing, 
Sunday School, Sundays at 8.30 a.m. Virtual Bible Study, Wednesday at 7 p.m. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Join us for Pastor Appreciation Celebration, Sunday, October 29th, from 2 to 5 p.m. Join the Women's Ministry Fellowship, October 27th at 7 p.m. How can we pray for you? If you have a prayer request, please send them to care at nazarenebaptist.org. Happy birthday to all of our October-born members. We have three ways to give. You can give your offering by mail to our P.O. Box. You can give your offering through Tithely to Nazarene Baptist Church. Or you can text GIVE to 833-402-2068. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Today's subject matter is about scars. See, there is a purpose to the scars of life. Christ suffered for us. But the question is, are we willing to suffer for him? Join us today as we look a little deeper into the subject matter of the scars of life. Be blessed. Well, praise the Lord. We thank God for his grace and his mercy. We thank God for the things that he has done and the things that he will continue to do in our lives. Now, beloved, would you join me as we seek the Lord in prayer? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you today for your precious word. For it is your word, O oh God, that comforts us. It is your word that brings us hope and joy. It is your word that we choose to meditate both day and night so that our minds may be filled with your peace. 
we pray now that you would allow your word to change us from the inside out that we may grow in wisdom and in knowledge for your word is of great comfort and a source of our peace so Lord as I pray I pray that you will perform a good work within us help us to put to death Lord whatever belongs to our earthly nature whether it be sexual immorality impurities lust or even evil desires or even greed. God, help us to rid ourselves of such things as anger and malice, slander and even filthy language. God, I pray that you would purify us of these things. Help us to be peaceful with no anger. Give us more of you that our earthly nature will completely be removed and that we will be able to walk in the way that is pleasing unto you. For no, Lord, we need your mercies daily. We need your protection daily. For you, O oh God, are forever faithful and everlasting, divine in nature and above all, God, you are holy. So grant us a heart of worship and thanksgiving and a love for your will because all honor and glory belongs to you the one who sits on the throne you O oh god are our hiding place you are our strong tower and so we ask that you would cover our families with your mighty hand where there is peace and joy i pray that your presence will be rich in our lives and abundant in our homes for i know that all we could ever want can be found in you so we declare today that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives and we thank you for being recipients of your unmerited favor may you be glorified forever and ever and we thank you God for hearing our prayer in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus Christ we pray amen well in a time where there is so much confusion God we pray that you would grant us peace in our minds and within our souls let us not be unsettled by the things of this world for you are a God who knows the beginning as well as the end. You are the God who was, who is, and will be. What a blessed day it is to be together again. And we are thankful and grateful to God for his mercy, his goodness in our lives. We thank him and we praise him for his love as well as his power and for the anointing that rests within his name. The Lord is good and his mercies are everlasting and his truth endures throughout all generations. Again, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for new mercies that has been extended unto us this day. I praise God for all of you and for your continued work in the kingdom and to all of our family and friends who are joining us today that are not members of our church we bid the blessings of the lord be upon your life now would you grab your copy of god's word and turn with me to the book of galatians the sixth chapter and i'll be reading verse 17 from the King James Version. And that 17th verse reads like this. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I want to preach from the subject titled Thank God for my scars. 
What is a scar? A scar is just an unpleasant reminder of something that has happened to us. But scars are not unusual because there are so many people who have them all over their bodies. And for every scar they have, it indicates where something bad has happened to them. And most of these scars we receive are from something bad. You see, when you receive a particular scar or mark on your body, it's usually there for some specific reason. But have you ever wondered, why didn't God make the flesh so that it wouldn't scar when it's torn? Okay, for example, the tongue has a certain type of tissue that doesn't scar when it's been torn. In fact, the tongue doesn't even have scar tissue. Have you ever bit your tongue and it left a mark, but it healed and the mark was gone? I don't care how many times you may have bitten your tongue or even have hurt yourself. God has fixed it so that the tongue can virtually repair itself. And when it does, it doesn't leave scar tissue. But however, the only scars that the tongue leaves is when you use your tongue to speak against your brother or your sister. It doesn't leave a physical scar, but it leaves an internal scar. You see, almost every one of us has some sort of physical scar on our bodies from either a sports wound or surgical cuts, or maybe it's even from an accident. But what about the emotional scars? Because all scars are not physical. Yeah, you see, it's easy to see the physical scars. You can tell if they're old ones or new ones or whether the wounds need to be stitched by a doctor or whether the use of a Band-Aid would just be enough. But emotional wounds and scars are not that easy to detect. Some of these emotional scars and wounds are in desperate need of treatment but have gone ignored for years and years. And ignoring these type of scars and wounds can result in some serious psychological damage. That's why it's so important to not only recognize when we have these emotional wounds, but to also know what's needed to heal the hurt. Because all too often, we hold on to situations, circumstances, thoughts, mindsets, and even trauma way too long after it has become obvious that we're still being damaged long after the event has occurred. Because scars are like that. They're just reminders of something that has been unpleasant. They're reminders of our hurt and pain. They're reminders of even trials and tribulations. And sometimes... They're even reminders of unresolved sin in our lives. If you were to ask a doctor, they'd tell you that a scar doesn't always appear at the very moment of the event that has caused the scar. Sometimes it takes a while for the scar to even make its appearance. But when it comes to sin, it does not always scar at the time of the sin. Sometimes it does, but not always. In fact, some people bear physical scars, scars that you can see that were a direct result of sin. Like, for instance, like the gang member who loved to show off his bullet wounds and the cuts from a knife fight because to his way of thinking, it was documented proof that he is sure enough a gangster who's worthy of membership in somebody's gang. Now, physically, there are some ways to cover up or even hide our scars. I mean, you can apply concealment or makeup, for example. And there are various makeups on the market that can temporarily hide a scar. There's even a product on the market that promises to rid you of both old as well as new scars. 
And if you're really serious, there's cosmetic surgery that offers more of a permanent solution. But however, sin will always leave a scar in our lives. And all of our sins are known unto God. You see, the scars of sin can remind, can remain there for life. And the only way to prevent the scars of sin is to prevent the sin. Because there is no makeup available, nor is there any cosmetic surgery for that. Because when it comes to sin scars, Jesus Christ is our only answer. The word of God reminds us that he that covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes it shall have mercy. But the consequences will still remain. In other words, he is merciful, but he will also leave you a reminder of that sin. You see, physical scars on the inside are one thing, but the scars, both emotional and spiritual on the inside is something else. In fact, inward scars are way more serious because these inward scars usually don't come until much later in life. Although the inward scars may not affect us, but they can affect those whom we love. And that gives us more reason to seek God's help. You see, there are so many things that we would just love to forget. But that scar there will be there forever, serving as a consistent reminder to us. And as painful as they may be, these scars, both inwardly as well as outwardly, actually do serve a very important purpose. They're there to remind us not to keep making the same mistakes. Yeah, you've heard it said that we learn from our mistakes. Or in other words, it's not bad to make a mistake just as long as we don't keep repeating it over and over again. But you see, God can use our failures to make us stronger. Here's an example. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt once said, the only man who never makes a mistake is the man who does, never does anything. Henry Ford was right when he said that failure was the opportunity to begin again more intellig intelligently. So for sure, the mistakes that we make in life are like scars. Because they're reminders to us to not go down that same road again. That's why we should never look at our scars, whether it be physically, emotionally, or spiritually, as something ugly or even unsightly. Because the psalmist said here in Psalm thirty-seven twenty-four, he says it like this. Though he fall, he shall not be cast down. Why? Because the Lord will uphold him with his hand. We need to let our scars remind us that the mistakes we make are worthy of learning from. Yes, the Lord will leave us reminders of the way and manner in which we received our scars. And yes, at times, these are physical places where the skin was torn. But watch this. God allows us to observe the healing process by letting the scar tissue form there. Think about it. He didn't have to do it this way. He could have made it such that once the skin was torn, that it never healed and automatically became infected. Any good medical doctor will tell you that an infected wound is serious stuff. Any break in the skin is serious and it can allow dangerous bacteria as well as infectious organisms to be set in there. But God gives us a physical healing process that we can see for ourselves. He allows us and he gives us an emotional as well as a spiritual healing process to assist us with the scars of life. I know that the scars of life are difficult to deal with. 
Though we try to move on, sometimes those same scars seem to hinder us from trusting and loving even ourselves. And even worse, trusting in God. You see, we tense up and become fearful of allowing ourselves to love or even to be loved again. But sometimes those very scars, those very scars can help us. For they remind us to stop and think about what we're doing so that we don't make the same mistakes again. But if we view it in the way that Paul here in the text viewed it, we'll come to the conclusion that God won't ask to look over your resume. He won't ask what kind of experiences you've had. You see, he won't even ask about what church you attended or who the pastor was or how popular he is. He's not going to look at your medals, your degrees, or even your diplomas. But he will look at your scars. This is how I believe Paul viewed his scars. He knew that Christ suffered for him. Therefore, he was willing to suffer for Christ. He bore as much as any man or woman had to bear for Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 25, we read this. It says, of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. <laughs> now, can you even imagine how ugly the scars on Paul must have looked like after all of this? However, despite the physical appearances, these scars served a purpose. His scars, his very scars, preached a powerful message. His scars told a story that no one else could tell. His scars represented the fact that all things worked for the good to those who love the Lord. Now, isn't it amazing? That only God would choose to turn the ugly marks of our trials and tribulations into a badge of honor. There may be a trial in your life today. And you just don't understand why. But remember Job. He didn't understand either. And he lost more than any man or woman would ever lose. But his endurance despite the wrong counsel of his wife and despite the ill advice passed to him by his so-called friends, despite the devil releasing his hounds to even buffet him at every turn, Job endured. The scars on Paul's body were the branding marks of Jesus Christ. Just like cattle were branded on the flesh in order to show ownership their bodies wore scars just to identify who their master was and so here's the point Paul has subjected his body to so much and suffered so much persecution in the name of Jesus and yet he stood and proclaimed the grace and mercy of the Lord and along the way there were people who challenged Paul's credentials. Now, mind you, there are even people today who would try to do the very same thing to you. And I know there are people out there who want you just to shut up the minute you received your very first scar. They wanted you to take your ball and just go home. But no. They even wanted Jeremiah to shut up and be still. But Jeremiah said that he did place the thought into consideration, but concluded that he could not do that. Why? Because the word of God was just like fire, all shut up in his bones. He couldn't help but to speak for God. And this is symbolic 
of those who bear the scars of Christ. We have these can't help it. No matter what the enemy tries to throw our way, God has been so good to us that we just can't help ourselves. And we are willing to bear the scars just like the gang member that was mentioned early. We don't mind displaying the scars as badges of honor. Why? Because they are badges of honor. Our scars are documented proof that we are indeed worthy of being called a child of God. Now go ahead. Just look at the lines and the marks of your own personal journey. The common wisdom that they call ugly reminders. But in the light of God's purposes, they are beautiful trophies. God has a purpose and plan for your scars. You see, I have scars to remind me every day of just how much God loves me. Do you have any scars? Do you have any emotional or psychological scars because of a circumstance or a situation? Jesus had scars when he arose from the grave. One of his closest allies, one of his disciples by the name of Thomas needed proof that he had risen. He needed to see the very scars in his hands as well as the ones in his side just to be sure. And these very scars, these scars became a part of the very fabric of evidence to prove that the resurrection was not a rumor or a figment of his imagination brought about by grief and denial because the resurrection was real. But to Thomas, that it was a scar of Jesus that meant the authentic of his testimony and because the resurrection was real it was documented proof that when we suffer for him we have victory through him if you have any scars praise God because he's given you the means to show the world that how much he cares for us and heals us through any means that he chooses yes we may have been hurt at one time. Yes, people may have criticized you and even spoken evil about you. And through the years, you have developed scars because of it. And yes, some scars are the result of sinful choices we've made. But remember, when God forgives sin, he forgives it all. And the scars that remain are not to remind us of our failures, but of God's victory over sin, of his grace and mercy towards us, as well as his provisions in our lives. And remember this, God doesn't give us scars to remind us that we've been hurt, but God gives us scars to remind us that we've been healed that we've been delivered and that we have been set free. Although Paul endured the attacks throughout his ministry, he reminded those that were involved that his scars showed that he belonged to Jesus. Thank God for the scars. Though they may look ugly to some, but to me, they're so, so beautiful. So until next time, may the grace of God and the love of Jesus and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Grace and peace, everyone. This is Pastor Davis. I pray that the word you heard today not only blessed your life at this particular moment, but I pray that the word you heard has met you at the right time. 
and in the right situation so that you know that you've heard from the Lord Jesus Christ today. And now you have an opportunity to establish a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're ready, we encourage you to take that leap of faith and give your life to Jesus Christ. Just simply admit that you're a sinner in need of forgiveness. Then confess your sins. Thank God for Jesus' death on the cross that paid the price for your sins. Then ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for the wrong things I've done. Please forgive me. I believe your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I surrender my life to you. Now, Father, help me to do your will. And thank you again for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. God just gave you eternal life. Please let us know by emailing us at the address below and someone will contact you. We look forward to hearing from you. We love you in Jesus' name. God bless you and welcome to the family.